already. So we learned about clients versus supplier in a contractual relation in the context of OOP. And also we learned about modularity and also how to judge that your design is modular. Now we will be ready to define what an abstract data type is, which uh, for which we're gonna draw all the concept that we have already we have already defined. Let's take a look. And given the problem, we know that we have to de decompose its solution into different modules, right? And also we can we can assemble those modules together to uh, supply the ultimate solution. And each module implements an abstract data type. So that's how I draw the connection. So each module you develop must implement an abstract data type. So what exactly is ADT? Let's now uh, take a look at, uh, at its uh, structure. So the abstract data type should really filter out some irrelevant details. So you don't necessarily have to cover every single detail you can think of in the ADT. You only include those that would be relevant to your development. So that's why it should, uh, should not include all the details, but only those relevant ones. And it should contain a list of, so what, what do you really mean by relevant? It should be uh, characterized by a list of declared data and also well-specified operations, right? Two things. And the analogy would be, think about if a single Java class is an ADT, right? In that case, all the attributes you actually declare will be the data part. And all the accessors or mutators you declare for the class will be operations. And this will be a schematic view for the ADT. Let's now uh, sketch some notes about how to understand the ADT structure over here. And at the same time, I also try to uh, bring in these two classes about uh, the supplier and also the clients that we spoke about client versus supplier earlier, and also the benefits and obligation to table, right? So these are just relevant to our current discussion for ADT, right? So think about for ADT, you also got a notion about client and supplier. So the green one here is just the clients. Anyone who is going to use your ADT, so they will be the clients. And for you as the uh, supplier of the ADT, you have to implement the uh, algorithm or to implement the ADT or, or to implement the module. So this will be the supplier. So the clients, they can only rely, relies on the public interface of ADT, right? So here I say interface, it would be very important for the client to know what the input types are and also what the output types are. Interface will be, for example, input types and also output types. So that when they actually try to request the service, they will know what to pass. And when they actually gain the result, they will know what kind of variable they should declare to store the result, right? Input and output. And the client should also know what they can really expect. What to be expected on the input output relation. For example, if I pass my input array into your sort service method, in that case, what I can get back will be another array that will be uh, uh, sorted in a non-descending order. So that'll be informally the what to be expected on the input output relation. Let's now talk about the supplier over here. So for the supplier, what you, to, uh, what you need to know is, uh, number one, let me use uh, purple over here. And for the supplier, of course, they were, they're gonna implement uh, all the uh, operations for the ADT, and they have to choose the correct data structure. And what are the data structure that we can choose? Well, we learned about three basic ones, right? So the data structure over here, number one, it could be arrays. And number two, it could be singly linked lists. Number three, it could be dub uh, doubly linked list, right? So these are the three possible choices usually that you can choose as a supplier for the ADT. Right? You want to choose the correct one, and also you want to make sure you actually will implement it correctly and efficiently. Right? Let's talk about obligation and also benefits. If you remember, for the clients, the benefits will be to obtain a service. At the same time, it will be for the supplier to actually provide that particular service reliably. Right. So let's now do one more annotation over here. You want to make sure the data structure you actually chose, right? 
So number one, they should be assembled correctly. Remember, in the very beginning of the course, we talk about correctness is the priority. If you don't have correctness, it doesn't matter how fast your algorithm will run. Will, will, will actually run. So number two would be about efficiency. And typically, we talk about time efficiency. Right, so these are the two obligation for the supplier. Correctness and also time efficiency. Right? Think about these two things are the obligation. So these two things are the obligation for the supplier, us as the supplier for the uh, ADT. On the other hand, for anyone who actually want to use our service, the clients, correctness and efficiency would be their benefits, right? That's something you want to keep in mind. And of course, what would be the obligation for the clients? The obligation would be when they actually want to call certain methods uh, that we supply, they have to make sure the input types and the output types should be compatible. That would be their uh, obligation. If they simply give us some irrelevance uh, data type, uh, irrelevant types for the variable, in that case, uh, there might be just some compilation error or some runtime error, in which case, uh, we as a supplier, we don't need to be responsible, right? So also don't forget about the obligation for the clients and for us, we can assume the user is gonna pass on uh, valid input values. Alrighty, that's about the uh, uh, annotation I would like to make about ADT, right? That's now, uh, all the bullet points have been uh, already uh, set over here. And just one thing I want to uh, emphasize. So exactly how we actually assemble our data structure together to uh, design our algorithm or to implement them is kind of uh, not relevant to the clients. The client don't need to know about how exactly we implement the uh, ADT uh, internally. We don't. They don't need to know. All they need to know is they can get the benefits about correctness and also efficiency, right? That's all they know. And to really conclude about ADT, I want to give you one more insight into the ADT. Since we are programming in Java for this course, so I want to claim the following. The Java API, either the library classes you can get access to, or whenever you want to define your own interfaces for your own classes, right? I would say in either of the cases, right? Like a, uh, you may just have some interface, you have generic classes, you have some nice description about what exactly the class is su supposed to achieve. I would say they are not exactly equivalent to abstract data type. They only approximate at best, okay? Uh, I wouldn't go too much into the detail. That would be up to uh, what you will learn in the uh, higher level software design course. But I just want to point out to you, the Java interfaces, it's a reasonable approximation of what the ADT is, but it's not perfect, right? There are imperfections. So let's uh, let's take a look at this one. Let's say we go to the interface in the Java library, uh, Java API for list. And you can see the list has been uh, implemented using generics, which is good. In that way, we don't really have to worry about duplicating our code for different types of the element, as we said before. And also they got some very reasonable description using natural language. But whenever you use natural language, that means you leave some scope for ambiguity or even contradiction. So that's why I said Java API or your own interfaces uh, is, is, is in some way only approximating ADT, but not precisely. Right, so it will be useful to have generic classes and also have some intuitive overview of the course in natural language. However, I would say, uh, if you look at uh, also individual methods over here, they also give you some very nice uh, description. But after all, it's not exactly precise. What would be the most precise way to specify ADT mathematics? But that's not something we'll cover in this course, right? So I want you just to know the final conclusion I want to make. Java API or Java interfaces they are a very good way to approximate ADTs. However, they are subject to ambiguity and also contradiction, right? That's something I would like to uh, conclude, right? Let me just go back over here, okay? So I only say the only approximate ADT, right? Because natural language is subject to ambiguity For example, so if you read through the description for maybe the set and also for this particular list, 
different people reading them may have different interpretation. Maybe you thought the set should be used in one way, but another user may, may be thinking about that should be used in, in another way. The only way to make it 100% precise without more than one interpretation is by using mathematics. But again, that's not something we will cover. Ambiguities and even worse, contradiction. Right, I think that's enough, all right? All right, so now we are done with uh, the definition for ADT. And I think we are running out of time for this week. I think it's a reasonable stop over here. And starting from next week, we're going to talk about different ADTs uh, and also their implementation using the basic data structure. Hey, stay tuned. I'll see you next week.